to destroy your box. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm talking about your box, I need you to understand I am not talking about your comfort zone. I'm talking about that one thing in that life that happened that when it happened, it literally shuts you down and change how you interacted with other people. When I'm talking about your box, I'm talking about that one thing that one person said as their opinion, but somehow you turned around and made it your reality. So we're sitting at the table, it's me, my sister, my mom, my grandmother, my grandfather, my two aunts sitting across the table and there's a spot open and I'm sitting there, I'm eating and I'm eating and all of a sudden I stopped and I looked up and I looked around and I said, where's my dad? My grandmother, she stops. And she slowly looks up at me and she gives me a look as if to say, we're not going to have that conversation now. She never says a word. She puts her head back down. She continues to eat. I do the same thing. I go back to eating and all of a sudden the macaroni and cheese doesn't taste the same. The ham on the bone, even my grandmama's homemade cornbread doesn't taste right because I have this burning question in the back of my head. And before I realize it, I get so upset, I look up and I shout out, where's my dad? My grandmother. She stops, she slowly pushes away from the table, she gets up, she walks over to me, she grabs my hand, she pulls me into the kitchen, she sits me down, and she picks up the phone, and next thing you know, I hear my grandmother say, I don't care where you are, get here now. An hour later, I'm sitting downstairs in my grandfather's den, and I'm sitting in my dad's lap, and I'm crying so hard, I'm literally choking on my own tears, my chest is getting tight, my ears are burning, with, with every breath that I could grab, I'm saying, but dad, why don't you want me? Dad, why don't you love me? Dad, what did I do wrong? I'm sorry. You wanna know what my dad said to me? I'm sorry, son. I'm just too busy. I was only nine years old. And it was in that moment when my box got built. And this was my box. I'm not good enough. I'm not wanted. I'm not loved. 13 years of my life, I held on to that grudge against my dad. And here's where it hit me the most when an opportunity of a lifetime came up. I had made it to one of the final auditions for a television show called In Living Color. And here's what happened. The day of my audition, my dad calls me and he's like, son, I really wanna congratulate you. Go out there, rock it out. My response, thanks, Michael, I will. And then as I'm getting ready to hang up the phone, he's like, son, I just gotta say, I've been trying to get back in your life, but you've been pushing back really hard. You won't let me in. I know I messed up. I'm sorry, will you let me back in? My response to him was, hold on. When I wanted you, it didn't work for you. But now all of a sudden, because you have a conscience, you want me to just open up my life and let you in? It took my mom to work not only one, but two jobs to take care of me and my baby girl sister to make sure that we had food on the table and we could go to school with no problem. You weren't there. You weren't there when my mom, she lost those two jobs. And some nights I went to bed hungry. You weren't there. Man, push on with that. I took that energy right into my audition. And I had the worst audition of my life. I missed out on an opportunity because the box was in the way. That is why I am bringing it up. What does this have to do with you? Many of you in here are brilliant. Many of you in here are genius. But the one thing that may catch you up from really experiencing your brilliance and your genius is that box. Because what happened was that situation with my dad, I walked out of that situation and at first I was hurt, I was sad. But then that sadness turned into anger and bitterness and all of a sudden I was more focused on me not forgiving my dad. And y'all, that grudge, that unforgiveness got in the way. I couldn't even focus on my opportunities because I was spending so much time on you did me wrong, you shouldn't have done that. Don't allow your box, your past, something that happened, hold you back. You have to forgive the person that had you create that box. Now, some of y'all are like, why are we talking about forgiveness? Because ladies and gentlemen, if you're holding on to a grudge longer than five minutes, you've held on way too long. So those are the three steps, ladies and gentlemen. Number one, acknowledge that there is a box. Number two, forgive the person that had you created. Number three, forgive yourself. And I'm not saying it because it sounds good. I'm saying it because that's what I lived. I finally forgave my dad. And now me and my dad, we have the most amazing relationship right now. And he's like, son, I can't make up for our past but I could definitely invest in our future, I'm sure.
on the outside, I'm like, oh, Dad, thanks. On the inside, I'm like, Ladies and gentlemen, things have happened in your past. Don't allow that to hold back your future because you do deserve the opportunity. And it's time for you to be ready for it. So ladies and gentlemen, there's two types of limitation. Limitation number one is the limitation that other people put on you. Let me talk about limitation number two. And limitation number two is the most dangerous limitation. Ladies and gentlemen, limitation number two is the limitation that we tend to put on ourselves. And the reason why it's dangerous is because a lot of times we'll put that limitation on ourselves and nobody else will know because it's just right here.